my name is Lars Christensen and welcome to live stream number 104. Today is today's Wednesday. It's December 13th, 2017. If you haven't started buying your Christmas presents yet, you're getting closer. I know that's why you came uh, to watch this live stream today, was to be reminded about that. Thank you so much for taking the time. Today's all about Fusion 360 as always, and we are going to talk about how to model up a, well, specific five-spoke flywheel that was requested from one of you guys uh, to model up a flywheel, five spokes. That's what we will do. See where well, we got people in here, so there is no reason to, uh, to not just jumping into it and, uh, you know, get Fusion 360 running, model up, model up something something cool actually what we're gonna do is i want to model it up two ways um i want to see if i can't do that so if i don't talk too much maybe we can do two models the reason for that is now i'm going to go back to the webcam the reason for that is there's kind of i've said it before there's different there's no right way to model something up in fusion there's different ways to do it so what i want to do is i want to show you what i would kind of like introduced to a brand new Fusion user using what I call the manufacturing process. Um, and then I'm gonna do it like more the official CAD way, um, how I would model it up if I was like CAD teaching a CAD, CAD class. All right, enough of this. So first, the manufacturing way. And what I mean about manufacturing way to model up this flywheel is, um, Think of, and it don't, you don't have to be a machinist or anything for this. You, it could be a bar of soap and a knife. Model it up as you would the way you manufacture it if you had to make it. So if I was going to make a round flywheel, I would probably start out with getting a round disc. So I'm going to go up and start a new sketch. We're going to use metric. Why not? C for circle and sketch out a uh, diameter. I'm gonna make my flywheel 125. This is not gonna be the most advanced flywheel, but that's okay. Um, and then I, it's fully defined, so I'm gonna hit Q for press pull, and we're gonna give it some kind of thickness, right? So what we got is a disc. Um, really how you probably would start out if you had to, to make a flywheel like this. Now. Now I have the disc, what's the first thing uh, I wanna do when I have that? Well, maybe I wanna plow a hole through the center. So just like as if I was standing out in the shop, wood shop, metal shop, whatever flies your boat, I'm gonna create a scat right on that top surface, do another circle, and I am gonna blast an 18 millimeter hole right through the center of this disc. Q, press pull, I'm gonna go into it, but it's gonna make it cut and I prefer to do all the way through. Now it doesn't matter if I'm changing the thickness of this also. So again, I'm kind of working the way I would if we were going to, uh, to, to, to make this in real life. So we got the disc we purchased. We just blasted a hole all the way through it. Now we might wanna kinda like take some of the meat out of the center of this one here. So you maybe would do that on a lathe or something like that. So I'm gonna start a new sketch on this face. Right click, create a new sketch. And I could draw up a couple of circles, but why not use offset uh, to kind of like steal some of the edges that um, we have in, uh, in, in available here. So I'm gonna hit O for offset. And I'm gonna select this edge and you can kind of like drag here, right? So I'm gonna kind of like go minus, and I don't know, minus five maybe. Minus five, one edge there. Let's steal this one here. So I'm gonna right click and repeat offset. I could also just have hit O again. Uh, whatever flies your boat, or flywheel, whatever you want. Let's make this one five also. So I just kinda like offset those two edges out. So with that, let's hit Q again. Hit this face, let me just rotate it a little bit. And uh, then we could kinda like make a cutaway like that, right? Like on the lathe. Kind of like do uh, that there. Um, now, before we get to before we get to the spokes, um, many times these flywheels kind of like have a a slot in them, uh, so they kind of like fit onto a shaft and they're kind of like locked in with a lock in 
uh, pin here. So let's create that one. So I'm going to right click, create sketch. And um, I'm just going to create a line up some distance. And, and to stop the line, you can if you double click, I don't know if you've tried this, I'm trying to get in the habit myself. If you double click when you place the end of the line, left double click, you're out of the line command. Okay, like the other option is you click on a line, if you left click once, then you kind of like eye another line, you could just hit the little green check mark there, or hit escape on your keyboard. If you ever used AutoCAD, you're good at hitting escape many times. But what I try to get in the habit of is create the line and then double left click, then I'm out of it. Huh. Okay, never mind. Now, um, normally uh, in CAD, we're talking about that we want to make this a construction line because then we're really going to use this to help. And we do that over here, for example. Okay. And then I'm just going to sketch a rectangle to do the slot. Now I'm just going to get it kind of like close over here. Um, and we can start doing some relations. Now this slot here, um, question to the live chat, how would you make a slot like this? You can think a little bit about that. Probably either you would be lazy and you could use either YDM or you could do like something like called broaching. Okay. Sketch is full defined. Hit Q and we can make that cut all the way through. Right there. So we kind of like got that T slot in there. Okay. So broaching gets the favor. Uh, so, so what we really got now is just kind of like approach this the same way as you would manufacture it if you were going to do it either out on the wood shop, the metal shop, or if you don't have a shop, get a bar of soap and a knife. Doesn't really matter. We're just kind of like carving the shape out. Now I'm going to show you, um, because I'm trying to do this a little fast. If it goes too fast, just rewind and, and, and look at it again. Um, now. I am going to show you after this a more like CAD right way to do this. And we're also going to make the spokes a little bit more fancy, I guess. All right, back to this. So now we're going to make our spokes. Well, actually, I would not make our spokes. I would make the space between the spokes, right? Because I will machine out the, the area that um, that's going to go away. So I'm going to start another sketch. Right click create sketch and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create another like helping line alpha line up like this now you actually don't need to make them always constructions inside of fusion you can actually sometimes get away with not making them constructions now I'm gonna kind of like make an angled line and then an angle line on the other side so I'm gonna hit alpha line again and I'm gonna snap a line that snaps into our kind of like edge here and draw that one up till it snaps in up there. D for dimension and we could give it some kind of an angle. Whoops, not length angle. D, I want to select the angled line and that helping line I created and we get a uh, an angle dimension. I'm going to make it 15 maybe. Now see how it's still blue. Um, it's not fully defined. Now grab a corner and you will notice that this line can actually still move like around here. It's not fully defined. So we probably need another dimension. D for dimension. Let's do from this endpoint till this line. Let's make it five. And now it is black. Now it is, uh, it is fully, fully defined. Now I want another of these on the other side. I could go ahead and just draw the same thing we just did. We could also go over to the sketch and use mirror. So under the sketch drop down, hit mirror. What are we? Oh, I hit offset. See that offset. There was a mistake between the chair and the keyboard. Mirror offset is right above mirror. And the object we're going to mirror is this line. The mirror line, the one we're going to mirror about is this helping line. And there is uh, the other line. Now, um, I realized that in real life, we probably want a little bit of meat between here. So we could go ahead and do another O for offset and select and make another kind of line in here, maybe minus three, just to add a little bit of meat in here. We could do the same thing down here. 
make that three just to to add a little bit of meat and uh, we could add fillets right now but i'm actually going to wait with that i'm going to hit q let's just see what we got here i'm going to select our two half moons move a little bit grab the arrows and i'm going to cut all the way through right so now we kind of like got this space between these books now um we do need some radiuses in here right we would never be able to to carve this out without some radiuses you have the choice if you want to do it here on the fillet or we could have done it in our sketch um i prefer to use the fillet tool if i think that there's a chance later on that we might decide to uh to change this fillet so i'm gonna make it three millimeters um if i think that the customer might come back and say hey i want the fill a little bit bigger a little bit smaller then i would add it as a feature if I know that the customer will never ever come and, and worry about this again, then I would actually probably just put it in the sketch. I could have just gone in here to the sketch, hit fill it, and we could have placed some fillets uh, between in here. Okay. So with this here, now we have the space between the spokes. So now I'm going to be lazy. That's okay when you are doing CAD and CAM. And I'm going to go in here and select pattern. I'm going to circle a pattern. Now, I prefer, whenever possible, to use features because I have kind of like controlled those, created those. I'm going to select features and I'm going to select our fillet and that cutout right there. Next thing over, start from the top and work your way down. Next is axes. Am I going too fast? Um, axes and rotate around the center line here. Now, by default, it gives us three. I want five spokes. So I'm going to make it five, hit enter, and uh, we kind of like got one, two, three, four, five spokes. Kind of cool. Um, now, one thing I'm missing on this one, though, is the backside here. Um, you will see that we don't have that kind of cutout, that feature right there. When we cut that whole section down, let me just move down to that. Right. Remember how we did that on the lathe? Uh, now where I have made all these holes, I want to do that on the other side. Now we could again use the mirror tool. Now pay attention because this is cool. We could again use um, we could again use um, the mirror tool for that. But you will notice that if I go over here and I say mirror, and again I prefer features, click that, and I select that feature right there. That was the cut. Uh, that we did down when I select plane you will see that the plane is sitting right at the bottom I actually kind of like want it in the center symmetrical to be able to to do that um, and this is a perfect I make this mistake all the time it kind of depends on how you're starting out when we started out with this model when I just made the disc I literally just sketched on one plane and I extruded it in one direction from from that plane now i could would be fully legit to go up here and i could create a mid plane right here and create a plane between these two faces and that would give me a center plane that i could mirror that cut around but we talked the other day about like layouts and how you kind of like placing things um if you go over to your um, your option over here where we extruded it out, the first extrusion where we created the disc. Be aware that over here I have a direction. We had just done one direction, but if I select symmetrical, now default measurement is half, so that's right now making it 60, but if I click on the next one, now I just moved the bottom edge down and made it symmetrical with the center plane. And actually nothing, you know, so now if we turn the origin on, you'll see that now I just moved everything down right there. This went a little bit too fast. Rewind back, look at it. Still confused. I don't know. Have a beer. Look at it again, then you get it. Uh, so now where I have kind of like moved, I moved my whole model down a little bit. So it's symmetrical. We can go back in. We can do that mirror. And again, I prefer features. Select that cut. Mirror plane is that plane right there. And now uh, we have that cut at the bottom. Okay. 
So quick way to kind of like creating a somewhat of a flywheel in here with five spokes, the manufacturing way. And I think that this is fully legit. I, you know, if you have, there's no right way to do this. If you're brand new, if this is the method that kind of makes, this is the method that makes the most sense to me uh, when, when I started, do this, okay? Now, let's do it the kind of like more what I would call CAD right way. And I might run over a couple of, of minutes today to show you this, but I want to show you the other way we could do this. And if, if you are brand new, just don't think that you have to completely follow this, but at least you get the concept. Afternoon pick up coffee here. Okay. So we could call this one our manufacturer flywheel. Oh, and by the way, tomorrow uh, we are going to make a kind of like a casting mold from, from this flywheel. So um, if you are into that, tomorrow is, uh, is, is, the, is the trick for that. Okay. Let's jump on to uh, a new document. So I'll just hit the plus sign up here and let's do it what I would call the more, f the more CAD friendly way to do this. Um, you've heard me say before, if you have watched videos before, if you haven't, welcome to the channel, man. Um, <laughs> um, if anything is round, revolve as many times your, 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 your tool. Let's do this with revolve, many revolves. So, starting out with a new sketch. Now, instead of kind of like creating the disc on the flat side, I'm kind of going to go into a side view of this one. I'm going to create another helping line that goes up here. Double click. And I'm going to create one kind of like in the X direction too. Nothing really too fancy. I'm going to create a, uh, a rectangle. And this is what I many times actually will do things. Just draw things close and then I kind of like tie it down. So I'm going to attach this box to this kind of like uh, end point here. So we can use the midpoint from here to here relationship. And let's apply some dimensions. D for dimension. And we made this disc 30 tall. And I can't, I can't remember how long we ended up making, making this one. Uh, <laughs> of course, let's make it 10 for right now. And then we had uh, the, the full diameter of our disc was 125. This is half of it. I don't like to do math. 125 divided by two. You can do that right in the measuring tool, just like, like that. Um, so now we got two helping lines. We have um, a rectangle. Now let's go up and use the revolve. Hit revolve. I'm gonna select the profile. That is these two ends. The axis is that kind of like helping line there. And I just created the outside of kind of our flywheel, fl flywheel, flywheel, like kind of like this surface out here. I don't know what a flywheel is. Uh, now, so I did the outside. I'm actually going to do the spokes in the end. Let's do the inside. Now I could just start um, another, another, a sketch and do another revolve, but you know, why not do it all in one? So let me right click and edit the same sketch again. You're allowed to go back and uh, let's do another rectangle here. Sketch that out. And um, let's do the midpoint from, well, actually this is not gonna be uh, a uh, midpoint. Let's do collinear from here to here, from here to here. Let's do a diameter. So the hole we blasted through there was 18, right? 18 divided by two, that is nine. Yep, just what I thought. And <laughs> let's make uh, a thickness here. We can actually make this one 10 too. Doesn't really matter. Um, stop that sketch. Now, when I go out of it, what happened to the inside sketch? Well, we just didn't include it in our first feature. So let's right click and edit that. Let's get rid of all our selections and uh, let's try to select both of them and the center. Oh, look at that. Now we suddenly have those two still the same sketch and features, kind of like combining them there. Now, 
<laughs> if if you watch Monday's live stream talking about bodies versus components, you might have already figured out that what we have now is two bodies, right? Because that they are not uh, they're not hooked together. Now we could, if we wanted to, um, we could hook them together. So if I go in here and start a sketch on this top surface and just do uh, kind of like another rectangle here, I'm just gonna do something. I'm not even gonna try to make it anything. I'm gonna Q, let's extrude, and let's go down here. Now it's gonna be a cut, but if I select this as a joint, what's gonna happen with these two bodies now where I just connected them with the joint? Standard extrusion, joint it became one, right? So this is kind of like how joints are working. Now, when I said yesterday that I was gonna do a, um, I was gonna do a flywheel, I was told not to do straight, kind of like spoke. So this is not gonna work, not good enough. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> let's create something a little bit more interesting, maybe. Um, let's get rid of this rectangle here. Okay, so if I'm gonna make a spoke that's a little bit more interesting, uh, let me create a line, alpha line. I'm gonna just draw something up here. And then we maybe wanna use something like a spline. So let's go in here and create a spline. And I'm gonna just do this free form uh, for one second here. Uh, hit okay to that. So I kinda like have a spline kinda like moving around here. Uh, of course, we can move around on the points. Uh, we can move the handles around and kind of like do whatever we want with a normal spline. Um, I just got a question the other day per email. I'm going to close this off, by the way, with two lines. Um, splines, how do, you, how do you make them controllable? Like anything else, D for dimension. You can create constraints and you can create dimensions to the handles. You can create dimensions to from one point to another point. You literally have to do the same thing um, as you would do if it was normal sketch geometry to lock it down. Or you can select the spline, right click, and you can actually fix it if you want to. Now I'm just gonna leave this here. Um, so there is kind of like my shape of my spoke. What happens, oh, what happens if you draw it on the wrong plane? <laughs> See that? Like if I go in and do, because I was gonna do a revolve again, if I go in here and I select, this is my profile and this is my axes. Well, that spoke is uh, not the right spot. Did I do that on purpose or didn't I do that on purpose? Hmm. We can change this. I just showed you in the manufacturing uh, one how we could move it in the feature itself. But we can actually also, if we get out of the sketch, we can actually also, if I turn the origin on here, you'll see my origin is, in this case, right in the center, but I sketched this sketch right up on this top face. That was a mistake. Right click on the sketch, redefine sketch plane. I hope that there's some good nuggets in this live stream. Redefine sketch plane, select that plane right there, hit okay, and that sketch is now sitting right on the on the center of that part. So now when I go in and say revolve, and I'm just gonna make sure the sketch shows, and I select, this is my profile, this is my axes, and I make it a join, there is uh, my spoke right there. It's a very fat spoke. Uh, of course, we could always go in here and, uh, and edit this if we wanted to, right? You get, uh, you get all this. I don't probably have to show you too much uh, of all this. Maybe that looks a little bit better. Cool. Um, and let me turn the audio off because that's kind of my way. And then again, I can go in here and create a pattern, circular pattern. And I'm gonna select feature again, select that spoke and spin it around the center here, I want five again, and there we are getting uh, the five spokes. Now, I still got five minutes left. I wanna use those. 
So I want to show you something that may or may not be, be kind of cool or interesting for you to continue using this revolve uh, principle because this is definitely maybe a nicer flywheel you think than the manufacturing one we had over here kind of like two different styles i guess many times these have a um, kind of like a groove in them on the outside so how would we go ahead and about do that well i'll use revolve again let's do another sketch i'm going to select one of the planes doesn't really matter which one so just i'm looking at it straight here um and then we could just create another another rectangle right to do a little bit of a a cut through so we can we can use the rectangle as a um oh, not a rectangle or a line we can use um the the revolve not you know, to make solids but also to cut so here we have a rectangle i am going to make it symmetrical point point into here um, I probably want some kind of a dimension on it so I actually want this edge right here so I'm gonna hit P for project so like this edge so then I get that point right there so now we can do a dimension from there to there 2.5 that's probably pretty good uh, let's do this one six is fine um, let's give it a width of eh, 22 is fine okay so I'm kind of like sketching kind of like a rectangle right there. Now let's do another revolve. Select that same profile, select an axis. That's going to be the same axis we've used all the time. And this time it's going to be a cut. Just let it be a cut. And now we kind of get a, um, a groove in here. Okay. Um, and again, if I just going to spend the last two minutes, uh, many times in the in here, there's actually like a little bit of a a area where you can uh, they they kind of like put grooves in here. Uh, we could again use the same technique. Uh, this is kind of like a repetition is key, and um, we could go in here and maybe create. Oh, now I'm kind of flying by the seats of my pants. P. I want to get that line there there create a line from here up there to there close that off how about that uh let's make these two equal length let's put a uh a dimension on this one for 22 well, how wide was it 22 <clears throat> okay and um I'm going to make this 45. Let's put a fillet on. Let's use the sketch fillet here. Just pretending that uh, we are in control. Okay. 1.5. That's fine. Now, with that fully defined, right, we could go in and do another revolve and select that as profile. Select that as the axis. I think you start getting kind of like the picture here. We get that whoops kind of like that maybe a big groove that's maybe a little bit big uh that there and uh then let's finish this up by going in and do a rectangular pattern i'm gonna select feature again so i would always try to select a feature let's select the direction this way right and um let's select how many how many did I make it then make it four we made it fall wide and spacing should be full. <laughs> okay, and how many can we fit in here now? With three, can we fit six? No, okay, so I did I should have made them narrow because now they're not gonna now they're not gonna fit. I should have calculated that out of twenty two. You get it. Uh, now we're using the revolve again to uh, to create this uh, little thing here. So if I went in and we actually did the math um, of this one here, what divides into uh, to 22, I'm not going to be able to do that um, in the live stream for sure. 
not without making a fool out of myself. Whatever, uh, you get it. <laughs> so I hope that uh, I hope that this was uh, I hope that this was was useful. Um, tomorrow we are going to do uh, kind of like a casting mold of these uh, flywheels. So kind of like how would we we create uh, a core cavity type out of this. 3.30. I hope you like this. Thumbs up if you do. Thumbs down if that's what you want to do. That's fine with me. My email address is down in the description area. If you have any future topics, I'd love to know about them. Also, today is Wednesday. Tonight, right now, is 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Tonight at 8 p.m. on Facebook, we're doing our Absolute Beginner Series there. So we're taking it, dialing it back and doing the live stream there. That will also come up here on YouTube as soon as I get to uploading it. <sighs> Thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. If you're watching the recording, have an awesome day. I will jump into the live stream chat and say hi to everybody. Take care, folks.